Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Start spreading the news I'm leaving today Yep, Cruz is on the way out with a broken suitcase He got trounced by a real New Yorker, uh, Donald Trump Look, I've not been a great supporter of Ted Cruz I felt he was too weaselly to ever win I think he's a brilliant guy He knows all of the facts He's like a walking encyclopedia of conservatism He's, He's a good man a true constitutionalist, he's unelectable, but last night he was knocked out of the ring. Not only did he lose last night, Trump knocked him out of the ring. That's the end of that story. Cruz also insulted people in New York, and boy, did Trump come back. You're listening to the Savage Nation. We're going to talk a little bit about the debate last night, because it's very important to tell you that I predicted that that mortadella with eyeglasses from Fox News would do just what the Mortadella did. Didn't I tell you that the Mortadella from Fox News, Neil Cavuto, would do this? Didn't I warn you that Neil Cavuto, who has the brains of a Mortadella that's been cured too long, would do exactly what he did? It's not that I didn't expect the Mortadella to do that. What I didn't expect was for Trump and Cruz to take the bait from the Mortadella, but they did. They fell into the eligibility trap, which they shouldn't have done, And if I would say Neil Cavuto should be ashamed of himself to be a waste of breath, okay? The man has no shame. That's why he works for uh, Rupert Murdoch. But the fact of the matter is the debate was fabulous. Anyone on that stage would make for a better president than the carpetbagger from Chappaqua. I mean, let's be clear. There wasn't a man on that stage, including Carly Fiorina, who wouldn't make a better... I mean, did I say that? There wasn't a man on that stage, including Carly Fiorina, should I have said exclude? Uh, well, let's say there wasn't a person on that stage who would not make for a better president than uh, than the than the carpetbagger from Chappaqua. So those are some of the topics. I'll play some of the sound. There are other stories that I don't even want to alarm you with because they're so they're so awful. They're just so awful. Here is a man who gets up on Tuesday with the State of the Union address and tells us that the economy has never been better and the stock market's in free fall right now. There could be a banking crisis the next on Monday. Did you hear him on on Tuesday? The man is such an inveterate, psychopathic, sociopathic liar. He says we have the greatest military. The same day they apologize to the Iranians, they say we didn't apologize. They didn't apologize. The greatest economy, the market collapses. And take a guess... Where Barry is today. Take a guess with these two huge embarrassments where your president is. He just appeared not before the world, not before the United States press, which would be low enough. He went on YouTube to talk to two crackheads who have a large following of drug addicts on YouTube to talk about what's right with America, what's wrong with America, and why America loves Donald Trump and he blames it all on talk radio. The phone number is 855-407-282. It's open mic to mic Friday, which means we can catch up from the week if you want. There were some great topics. I would say the high point for me was the Michael Levine interview, the DEA agent, but I don't know what else we could say about it. We have Sean Penn sounding like a scared child, giving his first appearance since fingering the drug lord. I mean, that's what he did. He's trying to say he didn't. I, I wouldn't want to be him, man. I don't want that kind of 15 minutes of fame. Let me tell you, if he's that desperate after an Academy Award or two to still be uh, relevant, you know. So, again, let's go to the callers, WVNN. Eric, you're the first up. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Michael, I saw Trump in Birmingham, Alabama at the rally, and I, I used my few seconds in front of his face to talk about you I said, Trump, please put in Michael at Department of Health and Human Services. And he said, Mike, Mike, you think he'd do a good job? And I said, yes. And he goes, he's a smart guy. I don't know if you're serious about it, but if you would take some time off from radio and if he appoints you to run that department, I think this country would be so better off. 
And you, and you I know, I've not. I only touched on it twice, and people thought I was kidding. I'm not kidding. If Trump wins, and if he still knows me, things happen when people become president. They don't remember uh, mere talk show hosts. But the thing is, if he did, and if he said to me, "Look, Michael, you're a, an able guy." Would you like to run any agency for me to straighten out the mess that's been made by these past administrations, plural? I would say yes, and I would definitely move to Washington to run HHS. And what I would do is cut welfare. I would cut the Social Security Disability Fund like you cannot believe. I'd get every fraud fraudster off SSI. I would throw all the people off SSDI. All the fake writers in San Francisco better go find a job cleaning toilets because all those people collecting crazy checks, sitting in cafes, cursing America, you're going to be looking for a job very soon. I would uncover all the fraud in these uh, uh, disability payouts. You have no idea what kind of money is going out here on fake disability in this country. Then I go and look at the NIH and the CDC, which these were two of the greatest organizations in the world. They have fallen down to the level of just being... I don't know what to say. They're nothing. They don't really, they don't warn us about the diseases being brought in by immigrants. They cover it up for the president. And moreover, there's no good science coming out of it anymore. It's all political science. Really, the only research that gets funded, by and large, there may be exceptions, is research that is approved by the government. Truly original scientific research has to be funded uh, independently, if that's even done anymore. I would change all of that. I had created tire section. Well, I don't want to get into it. This is too much, too esoteric for the average listener. But I thank you for talking to, to, to Donald about that. I would, I would, I would think of it. I would consider it. The only reason I would ever leave uh, uh, and move to Washington D.C. would be to run an organization to straighten it out in my golden years. <laughs> that would be, be a fitting end to my to my life. Would be wind up a bureaucrat in Washington. I would turn gray. I would turn sallow within three months. I can't imagine answering to people and sitting at desks, having meetings, you know, putting a suit and tie on every day. It's so not me. If I could run it by Skype, I would consider it. If I could run it like uh, Hugh Hefner runs the Playboy Empire in pajamas, a bathrobe, and run run the HHS by Skype. I probably could run it by Skype and do a better job than they're doing in Washington. See, I don't like lording it over anyone. These bureaucrats get off on that. Their whole thing is they like to have people come in and kowtow to them. I don't like that. I'm not into it. That's why I'd be a good bureaucrat, because I wouldn't be a good one. I'd be a very bad one. I'd actually get things done. But let's not go there. It's really not about me. Last night's debate was uh, very interesting. I did watch it. I had my warrior friend over, Doc, who fought in five wars. I think he's the only one. I, I asked him, do you know anyone else who's fought in five wars from Vietnam through 2005? He was a medic with a... Um, Forward operating, uh, I think he was a medic with a sniper team, a five man sniper team. I didn't know anything about him. I only know him as a nice guy who, who plays good music. He was a first class doctor. I had no idea he was uh, deeply in combat like that. You know, he doesn't show it. This is the thing about really tough men that I found in my whole life. From the time I was a kid, the toughest guys generally don't look it and they don't exhibit it and they generally don't show it off. The move, and you see, we're used to movie star tough guys. And we think that tough guys look a certain way. They don't. You take a 140-pound kid who's 20 years old, who's wiry. He's a tough kid. Watch out for that 140-pounder made of iron, the wiry ones. Watch out for the wiry ones. That's what I always say. But let's put that aside. Let's go on to the reality of it. So we watched the thing for a half an hour or so, and it was raining like heck out here. He took off. We didn't even get to dinner. The rain was too heavy. Uh, I had a couple. Of, he doesn't drink. Uh, he's smarter than me. And I said to him, Doc, if you don't mind, I'm putting the debate on. I'm going to have a drink. He said, no, I don't mind. I said, well, I would have it whether you mind it or not. So thank you. And I had a drink and a watch the debate. He uh, sat there not drinking, and he watched it. And he had certain things to say from the point of view of being a warrior. Believe me, he had certain things to say quietly in his own California way. But Michael, being a hyperverbal New Yorker, you know, you can leave the Bronx, but you can't leave it forever. I talk a lot. I talk in my sleep. I talk to myself. I dream to myself. I talk to God. God talks to me. 
And it's all the time a dialogue going on, a monologue really going on. And that's why I'm so great on radio. So we have sailors captured this week, and John Kerry says that's great. We have sailors giving up without a fight, without firing so much as a slingshot. That's okay to the, to the new America. We have sailors who we still don't know what happened, why they went off course and wound up aground on Farsi Island. They were actually, the news story now is they didn't go aground. That's the third iteration of what actually happened. The third story came out today, and I'll tell you about that later on today. They came up with another folk tale about what happened to our two fast boats, how they uh, wound up on the island. The whole thing is a charade, in my opinion, and no one in the media is following it up. Nobody is following it up. Nobody is following it up. Nobody jumped on it the way I did. I smelled, I smelled an Obama from the beginning. I smelled an Obama on that Navy thing from the beginning. That's going to become a, a new verb, an Obama. Don't you try to pull an Obama on me. That might wind up in our lexicon for years to come. Yes, he's not a noun. He's a, a verb. Obama's become a verb. Don't you dare try to pull an Obama on me. 855-400-7282. The issue of uh, poor old Ted Cruz is finished. The uh, I mean, Rubio looked like the kid he is. I'm sorry. I mean, the guy looked like a kid. He was so out of his league. Carson, till he makes a statement, till he finishes a statement, you know, I, <clears throat> I don't know how to put it. He's probably a very bright guy. Nobody becomes a pediatric neurosurgeon uh, based on anything but sheer, sheer skill and brains. I give him that. I respect the man enormously. He'd be a great surgeon, which is what he is. But till he makes a statement, as we used to say in New York, till he makes a statement, you could faint. You sit and wait for him to complete his thought. You're sitting there scratching the table. Your toes are curling up inside your shoe, hoping to God he doesn't make a mistake. You don't know what he's going to say. Christy, I'll tell you the truth. I liked Christy, but I don't trust Christy. Christy makes all the right moves. He looks like an alpha male, but he isn't. I mean, actually, he may be an alpha male of, of a certain uh, cetacean kind. But the thing is, I don't trust him because of the hug with Obama last summer. Remember, that was it. The hug was it. Anyone, I'm sorry, that was a little giveaway right there, that hug, the hug picture. Anyone can make a mistake. But the thing is, who else is there on the stage that you think could beat Hillary number one and would make a great president? Nobody. That's why Donald Trump is going to be the president of the United States. I, and by the way, I'm the only talk show host in America who can proudly tell you that I backed Trump from day one before the others backed him. They were stabbing him in the back. Am I wrong? Don't ever forget that. They're all going to revise their histories and say they were for him when they were against him. They're, they've all become, in my mind, very much like politicians. But never forget, I read this from the beginning. I like the man's politics. I know he's a good man. And I know, yeah, sure, he mangles the English language. So what? Look what happens when you have a super articulate president who mangles the Constitution. Back in a minute. Cruz, you suggested Mr. Trump, quote, embodies New York values. Could you explain what you mean by that? You know, I think most people know exactly what New York values are. Stop I there. I am from stop New York. There. Stop I there. Stop what, there. You're from so New York. The, hold it. I said stop it. That means timing. That means stop it when I say stop it. The innuendo from Cruz is all you need to know. The cover-up after that is is a, an addendum. It was a put-down on New Yorkers, as though all New Yorkers are a monolithic uh, breed. And all New Yorkers are like Nancy Pelosi. That's what he was implying. And he really stepped in it, and it shows that he made a big, big mistake. But the fact of the matter is, Cruz then doubled down and made a fool of himself. I don't know if you could pick it up from there, can you, Robert? Well, you have to go from the beginning. If you can pick it up from there, we have, we have a system here that's not... Uh, uh, where he goes, I'm, you know, people from New York, blah, blah, blah. And he says, I think most people know what that means. Then she says, I'm from New York. I don't know what it means. And he says, what? Let's hear you know, I think most people know exactly what New York values are. I am from New York. I what, 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 you're from New York, so yeah. you might not. But I promise you, in the state of South Carolina, they do. Oh, that's a triple insult. You get it? There are many, many wonderful, wonderful working uh, men and women in the state of New 